What's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's Kevin Forte and today we are taking a look at the Edmonton Oilers. Oh boy, they are the soap opera of the NHL to start this season. It's been a rough stretch for the Edmonton Oilers to start. Things could not have possibly gone worse for the Edmonton Oilers. We're going to take a look at that today. Everything that we were concerned about for this team has gone wrong and somehow things have gotten even worse beyond that. So we're going to take a look at that today. Guys, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you guys like this type of content, like these videos, and let's get right into it. So the Edmonton Oilers, the age-old tale of the Edmonton Oilers. So let's take a look at what's happened for the Oilers so far this season. So looking at their schedule, things um, really started off badly. As we all remember, that first week of the season, they played the Vancouver Canucks in a back-to-back a home and home and uh you know they lose eight to one in vancouver on the opening night of the season they lose four to three in the home opener against the canucks not a great start there looked like they might have found some momentum against nashville a six to one win in smashville and then they went to philly and lost they came home lost to a mediocre winnipeg jets team they lost they really lost badly to a mid Minnesota Wild team, and they lost to the New York Rangers at home in a pretty good effort by Peter Laviolette's uh, New York Rangers team. Now, this leads them right into, I'd hate to argue it's their Super Bowl of the season, but a Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton, Alberta. They play the Heritage Classic this weekend. Guys, stay tuned. We will be doing a live stream of that game. We will be doing a live chat. Uh, reacting to that game live. So if you're interested in watching that, make sure to check that out this weekend. Um, but this is a situation where the Oilers are already backed up against the wall and have nothing to lose. And without Connor McDavid for the next little less than two weeks, at the very least, because he has been placed on the injured reserve, the Oilers are in a lot of trouble. And all our concerns about this team are stemmed through multiple different factors. Of course, the first being the fact that they are without Connor McDavid. And there's so many, I mean, look at the game results so far this season. That is very concerning, very telling of where things have gone so far, where things have gone wrong for this Edmonton Oilers team. So, of course, the big injury is Connor McDavid. They they announced that McDavid is expected to miss the next two weeks, and that is because he was placed on the injured reserve. And luckily, not on the LTIR, but the problem with him being placed on the IR and not the LTIR is he's only going to be out for potentially up to two weeks, but because he's not on the long-term injured reserve, his money still counts against the cap, which means the Oilers have no roster room to bring anybody up. So this roster they have is locked. Unless they make a trade to move out salary or to make some kind of trade, that is the only thing they can do. They cannot make any roster moves at this point. So that puts them in a real tough situation to begin with. Um, and you look at this that I have right here, this is their record right now. The record is 1-5-1, and one, six goals in the last three games. So that's two goals per game, which doesn't look that bad on paper, but you consider that this is a team that does not play well defensively. And on any given night, and no discredit to the, you know, I'm not looking to disrespect the, the goalies in Edmonton. They've been, they've been bad, though. They just have not been good enough. And when you're only scoring two goals a game and on paper giving up at least three or four a game, that's a recipe for disaster. And right now, the way I look at this Oilers team, it's hard not to look at them in the key categories, and we love to look at these stats. So, of course, their power play is above average, 26%. League average is 20. That's great. Penalty kill, just below average at 74%. League average is around 80%. Okay, could get better, but around league average. Now look at that save percentage. Save percentage at the back, top box, in the top right. Save percentage 8, 
60 save percentage. League average is 900. I wouldn't be surprised if that if that save percentage is worst in the NHL. This is a very, very glaring stat for the Edmonton Oilers. And really sums up what we were all most concerned about. Now, looking at the point production. Now, obviously, McDavid's numbers are a little bit off because he hasn't played the last two games. He's been out with injuries. But, even with that said, this team relies on McDavid and Dreisaitl. Now, Bouchard has played well. He does have eight points. He's, he's a defenseman, mind you, so that's also a factor here. But also look at those goalie numbers. The goalie numbers have been terrible for Stuart Skinner. And I wish the best for this guy. I really do. But Stuart Skinner has not been good. Stuart Skinner has got an 846 save, uh, 846 save percentage and a basically four goals against per game average. Brutal. And Jack Campbell's numbers are not any better. His goals against is actually worse. I don't know what to say, guys. Like, all the concerns we were worried about for this team have, have come to fruition. Those being that... Those being that goaltending was suspect, and they kind of went with the same goalies we knew last year. Now, mind you, we're not good last year. This isn't anything really newsworthy. Their defense, not great. Matthias Ekholm stabilized things for a minute. He's a good defenseman. I'm not taking anything away from him. Bouchard's a good defenseman. I think that pairing actually is okay. But the problem is, is there going to be a point where Jay Woodcroft breaks those two up because there's such a defici deficiency beyond Ekholm and Bouchard that now they have to separate their good defensive pairing to try and offset their other terrible pairings. And that's another concern. Or are they just going to play those two to the max, playing 25 to 27 minutes per night, uh, inevitably potentially leading to an injury to either Bouchard or Ekholm? So... Either way, that's bad. The goaltending hasn't been good. Their defensive structure has not been fixed. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've almost forgot to mention the fact that their captain, Connor McDavid, the lifeblood of this team, is injured for the next two weeks. So you tell me where there's any sort of competency from Ken Holland. Now, listen, 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 listen. I am not a GM. I won't claim to be a GM, like I could fix this problem overnight and I know how to do this. But I will say this. We always knew that this team would be in trouble if McDavid ever got injured. And and I'll speak for any team across the league. Any team with McDavid injured, if he was on their team, would be screwed. Absolutely. But the fact that Ken Holland doesn't even have the cap space to even the the foresight to realize, well, if we have an injury to McDavid, we would need some kind of cap flexibility to be able to bring somebody up or bring somebody down to make some sort of move. It's almost like the lack of forethought here by Ken Holland has put them in this situation that they're in right now. And a team that's getting bombarded by the media every day, that they aren't playing well, that what are you going to do without McDavid and everything else... There's no sort of answer, or there's no sort of change that they can even make to this team. And what's even more damning and worse with this situation is now they have less of a threat for scoring. So now, instead of worrying about the two-headed monster of Dreisaitl and McDavid, well, now they could just key on Leon Dreisaitl. So that's going to make his game that much more difficult. Breaking out the puck. That's usually Connor McDavid's job. So now their breakout game is basically kabush. This is a team that scores goals and gets offensive zone possession through Connor McDavid. Connor McDavid takes the puck, blows past everybody, skating backwards defensively, and comes in with the opportunities for, for offensive zone play. Well, now that's gone. So now any scoring threat or ability to bring the puck into the zone threat is gone, basically. So that's concerning. 
Then you throw on top of that the Evander Kane situation where he got into a fight the other night and said, well, I got into a fight because I'm not doing anything else. And it was kind of a shot at Jay Woodcroft. And I assume they had a conversation after that. I don't know. But Evander Kane, especially in this situation right now, probably not the best time to be saying things like that. Just saying. I understand the frustration. I totally get it. But this is where they need a guy like Evander Kane to step up. Instead of creating more, putting more gas on the fire, per se. The Edmonton Oilers are in trouble. They're in a lot of trouble. Because even with McDavid in the lineup, they only won one game. Now things have just gotten inflatedly worse. And this most recent game against the Rangers, they get a shutout 3 nothing in a very lack of, a very uninspired game by the Oilers. And they don't look prepared. They don't look ready. And I think they just know that, well, McDavid's not in the lineup, so we're fucked. That's how they're playing right now. And this game against the Calgary Flames outdoors, I don't want to say it's their Super Bowl, but I think I'm going to say this might be their Super Bowl game. This game against Calgary is the game that can turn their season around. And it sucks that you need a game like this to be that type of performance. But this game I have highlighted for you guys right now might be the most important game of the season for the Edmonton Oilers. Because I don't think they play a game one of a hockey game in the playoffs if they don't turn this around right now. Because you look at that schedule, you tell me where the easy wins are. Calgary might be the easiest team to beat on that schedule. They play Dallas. They play Nashville, who they did beat last time, but Nashville's going to be a little bit vengeful, right? They You know, Nashville got beat up in that game. Matthias Ekholm's return to Nashville. That's the only game they've won so far. Vancouver, we saw the last time they went into Vancouver. I'm sure the Canucks are going to be, you know, fat and happy coming into that one. San Jose and Seattle both have looked vulnerable, so maybe they could steal two of those three games on that road trip. The Islanders have been sneaky good. They've been scoring a lot more. Their def- their goaltending is really good. So Sorokin, try to, if you couldn't score against Jonathan Quick, what makes you think you're going to score two or three goals against Sorokin? The Seattle Kraken, oh, another winnable game. Oh, yeah, and then they go back to the East Coast, where they play Tampa, Florida, Carolina, Washington. So basically, the old... Southwest Division. And that takes them right into American Thanksgiving. If there was ever a gut check time for the Edmonton Oilers, that's going to be this coming game right now. This game Saturday against the Calgary Flames outdoors in the Heritage Classic out in Alberta in Edmonton. This is their Super Bowl game. And they're going to have to do it Without their captain, without their superstar, and Connor McDavid. Guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of the Edmonton Oilers? I don't think it's a lost season for the Oilers. I think they could come back with how weak this division is. I think they could come back from this and potentially even make the playoffs. As crazy as it sounds. But that's only because they have Connor McDavid. I think that's the exception of the rule. But you guys know my saying, you don't win seasons in October, but you can sure lose them. And right now, the Edmonton Oilers are on the verge of losing their season in October. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.